past it, grass. Grasslands can be found on virtually every continent. And there are different kinds of grasslands, each of which see an average of 25 to 75 centimeters of rainfall annually. Like the ones found in North America, which have a varying climate with temperatures ranging from 38 degrees Celsius in the summer to zero degrees Celsius in the winter. These grasslands are often called prairies and are home to animals like buffalo and prairie dogs. In many places in North America and Africa, grasslands have been turned into farms, making it less likely for large wild animals like bison to live there. The nutrient-rich soil is great for raising crops and feeding animals. In the United States, so much of the grasslands are used for food that the area is often called the breadbasket of America. It's estimated that almost one quarter of land is grasslands. One reason grass is so durable lies in its design. Each blade grows straight up rather than to the side. This way, each gets sunlight but doesn't shade its neighbor. Grass can be clipped or chewed and remain healthy because unlike most plants, grass does not grow from its tips. Instead, grass grows from underground stems called rhizomes, which are not damaged by grazing. Grasses also have extensive root systems that soak up water and store food that helps grass grow back after a long winter. Or even after a fire. Fires are frequent on the prairie. In fact, they play an important role in the ecology of grasslands. Fires burn off trees, saplings, and shrubs that might compete with grass, but do little damage to a grass's roots and rhizomes, which send out new shoots. Grasses benefit from fire in other ways. The ash that is left after a fire is good fertilizer. The grasses that grow back are often richer and denser than what existed before. Over thousands of years, the animals of grasslands have developed adaptations or special features that help them fit into their environment. Grass is tough to digest, so grazers like buffalo and pronghorn have special stomachs that contain bacteria and other microorganisms that help them digest grass. Such animals are called ruminants. Ruminants cough up from their stomachs wads of grass called cuds, which they chew a second or even a third time. Other kinds of adaptations help protect animals from predators that might eat them. The scarcity of trees on grasslands makes it harder for larger animals to hide. Some depend on speed for safety. Pronghorn can run at 97 kilometers or 60 miles per hour. Because there are so few trees, most grassland birds nest on the ground. Rather than flying, the sharp-tailed grouse usually struts along the ground. To attract a mate, the male performs an elaborate courtship dance. The burrowing owl lives underground. When it senses danger, it will dive into its burrow. Many kinds of grassland animals live underground. In desert grasslands, rough harvester ants carry seeds and grains back to their nests. These ants cut down so many plants that they create large areas of bare land around the entrances to their colonies. The western garter snake hibernates underground during the winter. In warmer weather, it often basks in the early morning sun. Prairie dogs, which aren't dogs at all but squirrel-like rodents, dig elaborate underground cities with dens, sleeping areas, and places to store food. Sentinels stand guard at entrances that are built up into mounds. Prairie dogs have a great impact on other living things in their environment. Their abandoned burrows are homes to other animals. 
around their entrance mounds, prairie dogs eat the grass to within four inches of the soil. The grass that grows back is more nutritious. For this reason, buffalo like to graze near prairie dog communities. Prairie dogs were once considered pests by farmers and ranchers, and millions were killed. Today, prairie dogs are protected, but because of the impact of humans on the prairie, they are no longer the common sight they once were.